not really used to talking to adults when you spend <laughs> most of your time dealing with 1,500 teenagers. Uh, nevertheless, um, in reading Chad's report, um, it, what struck me was the report on Manatee High School. And um, let me kind of give you some background about how I came to Largo. I actually worked at Largo High School for five years as a teacher and as an administrative intern. And then I came back three years later to be the principal after doing work in other locations. So I have a unique lens to the school. And one of the, th one of the interesting pieces is that I'm actually the principal of a lot of students that I taught or coached at one point in time. So I'm able to get a lot of anecdotal information. Where are you, where's your brother and sister? Are they going to college? Did they finish? And Largo is one of those schools that failed to meet AYP year after year in either one subcategory or another. But I would argue if the data was available that we would see that we have, we always had a high graduation rate, 80 to 90 percent regularly um, from the time I um, got there in 1999. Um, but I would also argue that our students not only graduated but went to college at higher rates and completed at higher rates than some of my, comp than some of my um, partner schools. But that data is not necessarily available quantitatively, what I have is qualitative data. data. So those, that information would be very helpful to me as a principal at a school that I could say, no, we did not meet AYP, but our students are not go, are going, are enrolling in college, they're proficient and they're persisting into year two in college. So that information would be very important to me as the principal. Um, in looking at preparing our students for college and career readiness, when, that was always my goal from the time I became the principal of Largo High School. I always encouraged, um, emphasized the importance of AP enrollment, um, fourth year mathematics, fourth year of science, um, dual enrollment. We have a, we're in a unique location where we are across the street from Prince George's Community College. So if a student wants to participate or, or attend in a dual enrollment program and they're not able to do so financially, I can often use school funds to be able to supplement some of the parents' income, and I do that as funds are available, legally, of course. Um, <laughs> we, I, so as a principal, my responsibility is to build that type of culture, and we've done that. Um, it's important that you have like-minded individuals who work with you to get them to understand that our students are going to college, and it's expected that you say the same things I do which is you will take a fourth year of mathematics, you will enroll in the AP class, you will participate in dual enrollment programs so that we can prepare you for that first year of college. Um, it's interesting, um, until last year, I was not aware that the state of Maryland had post-secondary information available. And I actually found that by attending the College Summit Institute in Las Vegas and was able to work with one of the um, policymakers um, with the University of Maryland system. I was able to get a really good piece of data that let me know um, the number of students that graduated from Largo High School who enrolled in a post-secondary school in the state of Maryland, whether or not they took remedial classes and whether or not they were able to persist to their second year of college. And getting that information, I was really able to look at are we preparing our students for post-secondary education? And the answer, in my opinion, is no. Too many of our students are taking remedial classes. Unacceptable, completely unacceptable. Because just like your first year of high school, if you don't get from ninth grade to 10th grade, you're not going to graduate. If you spend your first year taking remedial courses in college, the likelihood of you staying in persistent is very low. 